I'm back. Well, what have I got today? Some wazzock. <laughs> I think we can call it a wazzock. Yeah, rock and roll. Here it is. Oh, Tony. What is it? A spaceship? A rocket? No, it's a guitar amp. The problem is, of course, that this is not any old guitar amp. This is actually the top of the line boss guitar amp. Yeah, it's got a bit of an identity issue. Yeah, no tubes, or no valves, as you say in England. And no tubes doesn't, uh, doesn't bode well, does it, for most of the guitar amps and indeed simulators out there. But this one's a little bit different, maybe. You're going to find out in this inside and outside review the likes you've never seen on before. All you've ever seen is people uh, being loaned one so they can play it and show you how great they play. Well, there's more to it than that. And uh, I want you to show this one and its glorious internals. <laughs> We're going to have its uh, bowels out and look a bit closer. Now, although this amp's uh, two or three years old, it's about 2016 when it was launched. There's still enough of them out there. And of course, the problem with this amp, its major problem, is it's 2,300 or 2,400 pounds, or it could even be 2,800 dollars, give or take. Whatever it is, it's a high price to pay for what's basically a transistor amp with no tubes. Yeah, it's a very high price. It's almost like buying one of those Axe FX things. No tubes. But as far as simulators go and uh, things like that, this is a very long way <laughs> from where an Axe FX3 or indeed 2 is. Yeah, and we'll cover that a bit later. And uh, yeah, that should be interesting to try and accumulate a bunch of differences between this and the other thing that's the same price, give or take. Yeah. But there are some really great things about this when you're buying it. Um, I'll cover that a bit later also. And uh, yeah, you'll maybe consider buying one. Yeah, believe that or not, you might well consider buying one. Indeed, as I did, I actually bought this for the review. And uh, yeah, you'll see the results as we go. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to whip this thing out of the case because this is almost like a, a, a three unit rack unit inside a case. That's basically its sort of size and shape. And as we move through this, uh, this amp, you will see, uh, obviously, all of the features and different things about it. And then, of course, we'll have some playing at the end. And uh, that's interesting too. Yeah. So, without further ado, as 98% of YouTubers say these days, I don't know why, I'm going to get it out of the case. Now then, as you can see, you've got a screw here and a screw here. And four on the front, and the whole thing just lifts out. It's absolutely that easy. So I'm going to go and do that now. And here it is, outside the case. Case is behind us over there. This is just like a regular rack unit, and so you could actually go and put this into any... Uh, any sort of rack if you want to tour around with it, things like that. Indeed, this amplifier was designed for touring around. And we'll get to, again, we'll get to that later. There's a load of stuff, but I'm going to show you on the top and we're going to pull the sides off and have a look inside right now. Okay, well, firstly, looking at the top of the, uh, the rack unit, what you've got is you've got these two uh, compartments that you can sort of screw apart take the lid off so to speak and inside is, is like a, a module that looks a bit like a tube but we can look at that a bit closer uh, a little bit later so what I'm going to do is continue to take the lid off this you notice the build quality of this is absolutely pristine it is one awesomely made uh, product now that there is no doubt you, you, I haven't seen higher quality on the outside of anything actually this is as good as it gets Okay, well, the screws are undone. It's all exciting. And for the very first time, you're going to see the lid removed from one of these. 
and of course we're going to go much deeper well here we are inside and what an awesome piece of looking gear this is uh, everything I can see in here and although at the moment you can't really see much in the camera there you're going to because we're going to go much closer but you can sort of break the amp down into a number of areas right from the off uh, we've got two power transformers and those go a long way towards contributing the weight of this amp because it's not a flimsy little thing like most of them are uh, if you go and take a fractal audio it's uh, it's lighter than this by a fair amount and that's probably because it doesn't have power outputs in it and uh, transformers like this well I know it doesn't as <laughs> a cheap flimsy little switch mode power supply which is another story but on this we're talking about this product uh, there are two on this one 230 240 volt power transformers and they help to deliver out to the back which we'll see later on a 16 ohm cab you could have a 4b12 16 ohm cab and believe it or not you could have a second 4b12 16 ohm cab both plugged into this with this cranked and i'm telling you this will move you across the arena at 150 watts it isn't the 150 watts that you or i would normally associate with transistorized power amps uh, this is far more than just a transistorized power amp as those things at the front will attest but we'll come back to those as well so what i want to do is to sort of break down this front end as to what i can see here right now and whether i'm right or i'm wrong doesn't really matter except to say that you probably have never seen in one of these before oh by the way there's another transformer down under there which we're going to get to have a look at a bit later so for now you've got these power transformers you've got a power supply section down there pretty big power supply section you've got another board under the front here I don't know what that is yet but we'll find out we've got at either end we've got what look like really big power tra uh, transistors so you could say those are the output sides of the uh, the amp we've got a back plane that controls or, sh or should i say it doesn't control it has uh, all of the output going on right there it's got a little board there i don't know what that's for yet but we'll find out there's another board here that i suspect is related to uh, the input side of things sort of comes in down around through this area and of course these tubes we'll call them that <laughs> they're not really tubes they're more I don't know uh, little circuits and again we're going to look at them a bit closer too you've got a, a really high quality fan that's very very quiet by the way again unlike the fractal audio that was so noisy you would never use it in a studio unless you're an idiot that is uh, so let's uh, let's go and zoom in a bit closer to each one of these sections and uh, have a look at the sort of overall quality because the quality on this product is second absolutely to nothing honestly second to nothing and some people might find that hard to believe uh, you know bearing in mind where it's made and where is this made this one is made in Malaysia but there's some good gear that comes out of Malaysia it's rather different than China there's some good gear that comes out of China but there's an awful lot that isn't okay well on the power amp side of things remember there's another one of these at the other side over there which you'll see a bit later you won't see that much as we sort of stand I'm not going to pull this all apart by the way uh, I don't really want to do that but if you if you can see right down inside you can just about see them there there's uh, actually four great big fat transistors really great big fat ones and we've got a lot of other components across here on this board that uh, 
there probably ancillary components that relate to this. I, I can't tell you the answers because I've no circuit diagrams, I've got no information about it, but you can see as a unit, a great big massive heat sink, and I mean a great big massive heat sink. Uh, not much else to say about that, except the quality is really, really uh, obvious, really. <laughs> Great components, uh, none of this uh, stuff that isn't going to be reasonably easy to fix as well. If you were ever to get a problem, which I doubt. Now we've got a shot here from the right hand side front of the amp. And that little section there that you see there is actually the input from the front of the amp. So it comes in there, goes off around in these wires, magically uh, appears to go up to a board up that way, which we're going to look at next, and so on and so forth. So, so you can see that the input is pretty much awesome. Okay, well, we're going to take a look at this input board, and this is probably where all the processing is done regarding the simulation, because this particular amplifier doesn't use particularly software uh, for its simulations. It tends to use what was designed. Uh, electronically developed to simulate uh, what actually happens with a tube. So it's not all about uh, software that changes every other hour that you've got to keep upgrading this amp. It does none of that. There's no faffing around, no uh, 5,000 cabs, there's none of that crap. On this system, you plug it in, you turn it on, you're going to see it later, you turn it on and you will have a really great amp. So this hardware simulation board, I'll call it that, I could be wrong but I don't think I am. It's like a control board. Uh, let's go a bit closer see if I can show you. It's in the top left hand corner of the amp and you can see there's a lot of discrete components and that sort of thing. There is surface mount on that board but I can't easily get to it to show you really anymore. It says there, it says PWB main board assembly. So I think that's where all the uh, the goodness comes from, this little board here. And of course it whips across and uses those uh, plug-in things that look rather like tubes from down the front. And is also controlled probably through this wire and some of these down here that all shoot off all over the show. Yeah, all looks good. The quality is superb. There are two of these uh, transformers and they're big and heavy. For what they are, bearing in mind there are no tubes. Uh, these, these can really take the, uh, give you a bit of power. That's, and you're going to need the power for the amount of components and those transistors and the rest of it that are in here. Because those are all power transistors that we looked at a bit earlier. We're going to look a bit closer when we get to the other side, uh, over there, it's all coming up. So one of the things to note is that this is not switchable from 120 to 240. You can see that these are 230, 240, no ifs or buts, you aren't going to change any of that. Unfortunately, that's what you're stuck with. So don't come into this and think, oh, I'll just flip this across to 110 or 120. It isn't going to happen. Okay, let's consider for a few seconds where we are. We're going to go and take a look at this board across the back. Well, before before we do that, let's uh, let's just have a quick closer up uh, view of that fan, which I think is important also. Now, in the case of this fan, uh, this is one of those axial type of fans, but it is extremely uh, quiet. There's no uh, side play in this fan whatsoever. It's all really very quiet and designed to blast air in to the amp. Very important aspect and uh, you know when I looked at the uh, the Fractal Audio Axe FX3 fan it really was noisy and uh, that's why I'm drawing your attention to this fan which is half the size or less than the other thing and uh, that other product didn't even have a power amp in it. Uh, must tell you something. Now then, this uh, this I/O board across the back. You can see it here. It starts here and it runs 
a fair old way across. You'll see. And these are the output components. You can see them. There's two 16s and an 8. That's the 8. There's the two 16s. And then you have another little board stuck on the side, which we'll come back to in a moment. But you can see the quality overall. Uh, it's absolutely, you know, like most Boss and Rowan gear, <laughs> I have to say, it's absolutely really well made. And uh, you can't really buy better quality than this uh, product and the way that it's been built. Uh, it's faultless, honestly, faultless. So that's across the back. Uh, some of these are surface mount SMT components, but as well as that, you also do see, uh, you know, uh, these type of components as well. You see various capacitors and things. So none of it's rocket science. It's a little bit more awkward to service if you did get a problem. But of course, with it being on a backboard, you could probably buy a replacement board from Rowan. Now the thing is, most of these boards have got little names printed on them, which is quite nice. This one's called a sub-amp board. And you can see that it, it sort of mounts onto that cross board. You know, the one with the... There's the connector for the speakers. So it's mounted on that board. Uh, you've got a bit of a connection there and all the rest. Now, again, you've got some of it surface mounted and some of it isn't. But again, very nice board, very well made. What more can you say about that? It's absolutely awesome. Well, this board here is really part of the power supply and it, it all relates to the input. Now, the power input is just behind this board, just down here, just, just behind it. Um, so what happens is it comes in, power comes in down here and it's distributed off to these two uh, power transport that, uh, that way that we looked at earlier. You can see these, these cables running off and that's how it's distributed off into the amp. So nice little board. Note there's a fuse there. You can see that fuse there. And I do believe there's a fuse. Let me take a look. I do believe, yes, there is. There is a fuse at the other side also. So very well protected. First class quality. Not a single issue with any of that. Now before we do just go off down to the power supply board and then carry on around the amp, I want to show you the other side this is the other side of the amp, which also has four power transistors bolted to this massive heat sink. And this board behind it is, I guess, part of the control board. Uh, it goes to both sides, does the cabling, by the way, and it's controlled from all the boards in, in the amp. So it's sort of like 275 watts stuck together, at a guess. It is a guess because nobody tells me anything, do they? But uh, don't worry about it. But look at that little board there. Um, that little board there, if I can get some light on it. Let's have a look. That says there, what is a head amp minus board assembly? And there it is. That's what it says. It's. Uh, we got any dates or anything? I can't see all that. But you can see there's a lot of components. Well, I say a lot, a few capacitors and resistors. And the rest are all discrete components, uh, which is quite nice to see. Uh, but it's all first class quality. Not a single issue with any of that. Uh, I don't think you'll ever see much of a problem with any of that stuff. It really is uh, top class. Now I do have to say that it's rather difficult to photograph down inside there. But you've got uh, a number of uh, packs that control regulation and all sorts of things. This is the main power supply section down here. And although you can't really see that much, you might just about see that component. And there's another one there sitting at the side. And that board goes along uh, to about here. So there's a section underneath this turret board that I can't easily take off uh, to show you. But this is a very different power supply than the likes of what you've seen on the uh, Pratt Audio that's a cheap and, um, in my opinion, nasty power supply. Not at all comparable to this. This is far, far superior. Hopefully you can see that other transformer down under there. And there's one or two other components on a board that goes across the back. I can't really 
get this piece off. So that's as far as we're going to be able to go down there. But once again, you know, there's no, it's flawless on quality, absolutely flawless. And across the front of the unit, except for this section and one the other side, you've got a board that goes all the way across uh, with the components on. Just these part, part of it and uh, yeah, you can see the quality yourself. Exceedingly high quality. Now moving along, you've got this uh, tray assembly. You can see it's sort of screwed down in a number of areas. It isn't about to move, let's put it that way. Very solid. And inside there, you've got these two, uh, they call them modules, I think. What they are is they're like an electronic uh, circuit inside there. Uh, these things glow when you've turned on and you can set them up in various ways. But the thing about them is that uh, they look, uh, you know, electronic rather than software, although there might be some element of software in there. It's difficult to say because Rowan don't talk so much about how they achieve these results. Pretty much like H&K don't on their stuff, but this sounds better than any of the H&K Black Shadows that you might have played. Trust me, it does. You'll get to hear it later. So, this unit comes with this module here, which is a bit like, they say, uh, an Eddie Van Halen type of sound. And this is an extra one, which costs, by the way, they cost money. You don't see them second hand very often. This one's, uh, I bought this separate, and it costs about £260, give or take. So that's about $300. It might be cheaper in America, but if it is, good luck to you. Uh, and this is a Steve Vai one. This is supposed to be uh, developed by Steve Vai with Rowan Boss. And I'm pretty sure it does. When you flip into that and you play the Steve Vai stuff that my grandson does and I can't. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds rather like Steve Vai. In fact, this one here, this Eddie Van Halen sort of tone, I'll call it that. Uh also sounds so much like Eddie Van Halen, uh, if you can play that stuff, which I don't, but it, he does. So you'll maybe get a sample of that a bit later on. There's also a, a third uh, option setting. I mean, it's not an option, it's there by default. It doesn't use either of these two. So the amp itself has a sound uh, that's within the amp and not part of either of these. Anyway, that's enough of that for now. Uh, I think you've seen most of what's inside. Uh, not all of it by any means, but uh, yeah, really, really well made products. And just have one last zoom out at it, yeah. And you'll get the idea. So I think what we'll do next is uh, go around the back and take a look around the back. And then we'll have a look around the front and then we'll go back up top. Sounds like a plan, huh? Okay, well, here's the uh, the first overview of around the back of the uh, Wassercraft uh, amplifier. The 150 watt one, by the way. There's also a 75 watt one, uh, which was released a bit later uh, because they felt that 150 watts didn't work well in your house. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> You can shut this amp down uh, much further and we'll come to that a bit later. So as you can see, it's, it's a reasonably uncluttered back end on this, uh, this amp. So what I'm going to do is zoom in and run through this in pretty much the same way I do with every product. And uh, we'll look closely at it and determine what is and what isn't. That sounds like an idea to me. What do you think? So let's cover the amp from left to right across the back. Well, first of all, you've got the fact that it's made by Roland. This is a 230 volt, 50, 60 hertz, 110 watt amplifier. It's a Wazza head. There's its serial number. Do I even care? No, I don't. We've got an ACN uh, that's an industry standard, really. Uh, IEC type of connector. Want of a better word. And then on this amp, we've got all these certifications. We've got an FCC. We've got a CE. We've got a Wii and we've got a Roche, so that's all nice. And can ICES3 be an MB3 B? Which, by the way, is exactly correct for importing this amplifier into the country that I'm demonstrating it in. It's nice. Makes a change, doesn't it? 
You also notice that uh, it's got against electric shock and all that sort of stuff. Carb compliant, phase two, Rowan Corporation. Section this, it's got all the information in there, as it should have. Uh, and we'll talk about this CE approval while we move a little bit further down that way. Importantly, next, if you look, we've got the speaker out section. The hair on it there, oh my God, it isn't off me. <laughs> we've got two 16 ohms, an A and a B, and that's rather important. And then you've got the 8 ohm one here. Come back to them in a sec. We've got a foot controller that I'll show you when we go back up top. And we've got a line out section here uh, showing you number one's ground, two's hot, three's cold, and we've got a ground lift with off and on. And we've also got a regular sort of uh, connector a bit further down, which we'll come to. But let's come back to these for a moment because this is important because this amp was made for pretty much specific uses. One of which is two 4x12 cabs stuck on the end of these two here, an A and a B. And uh, yeah, it'll drive them all day. The amp won't overheat. It won't get noisy on this fan. It won't do all the things that uh, some of them do. And uh, that's real 150 watt power. This is not one of these uh, transistor type amplifiers that claim 300 watts and sounds like 10. No, this is 150 watts out when it says it. An equivalent of, let's put it that way. Uh, it's certainly very, very loud if you crank it. Moving along a little bit, we've, on the line out, there's a quarter jack, which I didn't show you on the last uh, section because it was just off camera. This amplifier uses a, a technology called, they call it tube logic. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we go back up top. Proudly presented as Waza Craft. And Waza is for uh, not just quality, but for artistry, for want of a better word. I can't read Japanese or Chinese, but that's what they say. You can have the phones on the back of this. And by the way, you can put your phones on it. Uh, you don't have to have any speakers plugged in, which is nice. Moving along further, we've got a MIDI in, so it's controllable with a MIDI in, probably between the channels and reverb, but you're not going to be changing everything. Eh? We've got two effects loops, which is very nice because you can have modulate effects on one and maybe uh, something else on the other that doesn't, you know, interfere. So two of them. And we've got uh, a recording out by way of a USB, you can see it there. All very nice. And uh, there is a control program for Windows and Mac for when that signal gets to your PC. So you can adjust the uh, what's coming into the uh, computer from this app. They say. I haven't tried it yet, but no doubt I will. Lastly, and most importantly, if you can see down there, I think you can. Zoom in a little bit. You've got an address. Now that's all very important because it should have an address on the product. And it should also have, remember those? All those on the product. Yeah. So we've got an address, we've got the certifications. Which, unlike the Fractal Audio FX3 that came to the UK via some place in Europe, that product was not marked and not certified properly on the product, so it could be confiscated by trading standards. And if anybody wants to test it, take yours to trading standards in the UK, and I can assure you they will take it off you. Thanks. And no, they won't compensate you. They'll tell you to go back to the importer and get your money back because you're legally entitled to. Now then, here's an overview of the front of the amplifier. And as you can see, it's a pretty nice looking bit of gear, especially if you play metal. <laughs> However, 
This amp is far than just a metal amplifier. Absolutely eons away from that. So let's take a look across the front of this. I'll break it down into little sections. By the way, this is a four channel amp. Uh, so you're getting value for money, so to speak. Okay, well, we've got the ever present input. This is where you plug your guitar, all nice and easy. Even I can do that, right? Got a couple of uh, rack arms that are a bit meaningless other than looking good, I guess. That's really the, the use of them. And before we move along this way, I'm going to take a look at these two here. Well, first of all, you've got this, this three-way switch. Feels very nice too, I might add. You've got a three-way switch. The first one says internal. And uh, that will give you a particular style of tone, which we'll get to hear later on. Then we move on to A, which gives me, sounds to me very much like a, an Eddie Van Halen type of sound. A sort of 80s type of type of sound. You're going to hear it and uh, you'll hear a bit of Eddie Van Halen playing it. Yeah, why not? Unfortunately, it's not Eddie, but it's as near as you can get, <laughs> especially on this video. Don't worry. And then we've got this, this B one, this over here. And, and what that's about is, it'll select this other uh, module, which resides in a window that way. Module A resides in this window. And module B for this particular amp is uh, created by Steve Vai. In fact, let me reach across. There's the box. Yeah. So. All well and good if you've got your £270 or $350, it might be cheaper in America, uh, to, uh, to actually just throw at the amp. Yeah, <laughs> it is expensive. There's no, there's no question about that. So that's the amplifier uh, selector. In effect, three amps. Now, they did say uh, lots of things about that, but... We'll come back again to that a bit later when I do my summing up and that sort of stuff. We've got this other one here that says line out air feel. Air feel's a funny word because it doesn't mean anything to me. And I'm quite confident that that doesn't mean anything to you either. What does mean something is record, live, or blend. Well, blend doesn't. But let's go through it. That's where you'll get the feel as if it's been... Uh, a recorded recorded sound so what that really means is what's coming out of your speakers sounds like it's come out of the studio yeah this one here makes the amp feel different so it does feel different under record it feels different on a live as well and you know i've talked off and on about uh, the feel of an amplifier and the majority in fact almost almost every simulated amplifier i've ever tried doesn't have the feel of a tube amp. It really doesn't. And some people will say, oh, it's, it's great sounds, it's great this, it's great that. Look at all these speaker simulations we've got. Look at all these effects. Look at this, look at that, look at the other. That's all well and good, but the, the thing doesn't feel right. And uh, I could name product after product that I've tried uh, where they don't feel right. They might have similar sounds, but not quite the same. But the feel is very important. I once talked about that, uh, comparing a Epiphone uh, Plus, I think it was a Gibson Les Paul Plus, to a Jimmy Page Les Paul. And they're on my channel somewhere where they played together and compared them. The difference was really, uh, to a large extent, the, the, the Les Paul did sound a little bit different, but the feel was very different. And as I flipped between the two in the track that I was playing, I could tell the difference a mile off. <laughs> anyway, that's what that's about. In my opinion, they might describe it as something else, but I, that's how I describe it, and that's what matters in my review, not theirs. And, and the third one, you've got a choice here. It says blend. Well, what that's about is a mix between those two. I have to admit, I tended to have it... When I've used this previous to this video, I've tended to stick to live and add the uh, occasional recording switch section. Not so much on blend, 
I didn't quite get that. I thought it was something to do with uh, mixing eggs. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on a little bit. Uh, if you look at this section, and then this section, and then this section, and this section, you can see that basically we've got one, two, three, four channels. Channel one's supposed to be clean, but if you crank this up, uh, and as you move this across, yeah, trust me, it can drive. Then you've got a crunch channel, which again, if you crank the things up, uh, it can be loud and it can be more than just a crunch. So they have some great sounds in here. Then we move on to lead one down here. Again, very, very drivable. There's so much uh, sustain and drive. Uh, you really wouldn't want to put a pedal in front of it. At least not on this channel or this channel, lead two. You've only got one set of uh, uh, EQ uh, per two channels. So that sounds different than that when I kick my foot in to lead two from lead one. So in my opinion, and it is my opinion, this channel is voiced different than this channel. Those two are voiced pretty much the same except one's, well, it seems that way, except one's got more crunch, sort of similar. Similar, not the same. But these two are, in my opinion, very different. Right, which is important. Let's talk about this little panel here for a second. You like that? I can almost play music on that. <laughs> what this is, is it's like a mesh grill. And that module that's inside, module A on this, this particular one, glows. Uh, but if you were set to internal over here, it sort of pulses. You'll see it later. But if you set it to module A, which is this one, it will come on and stay on as opposed to being pulsed. Whereas the other one over there, if you've got that fitted, that one will pulse. If you're on internal, they'll both pulse. The light, that is, not the sound. So that's an interesting uh, little thing, you know. And you can set up different ways that these pulse. You can have them all so they don't light up at all. Or you can have one pulse in and one. Or you can have them both on at the same time. It depends what you want. I haven't seen anywhere where you can change it from blue, though. Uh, I think that's stuck inside the module. There's a fair amount of stuff inside the module to make it glow. So here's that. These little knobs here, these little buttons... Uh, for when we choose a channel when we haven't got the foot pedal there okay well those are the last two of the knobs we just looked at and we're starting here so for channel one and channel two we've got a bass a middle a treble a presence and a reverb yes it has a digital reverb built into the amp and uh, it's a very nice digital reverb so it works well you've got exactly the same for the bottom channel or the bottom two channels lead one and lead two bass middle treble presence reverb and over here we've got a master which uh, very useful you really need that <laughs> anyway you can drive any one of these channels with the with the stuff that we've already looked at and it does a very good job indeed yes very good job I like the uh, the very nice logo as well, the Wazacraft logo. There it is, proud uh, and up front. Yeah, it's showing you that this this uh, transistor transistor type of amp or simulator. I, I hate to call it a simulator because it's hardly. <laughs> uh, there it is, and uh, in all its glory, so to speak. We've got two effects loops, A and B. Uh, um, you can have different things on each one. So, so that makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. You can have them also uh, set up as uh, serial or parallel, which I didn't mention around the back. Very sorry about that. Now then, well, let's take this one into account first rather than just zooming across. You'll notice here that this is called cabinet resonance and you've got vintage, modern and deep. And they're very good descriptors of what that does. So it doesn't matter which amplifier you're on, you know, the internal 
the amp A or the amp B that this thing's got if you've got the modules fitted. Well, it comes with one of them at least. Uh, you can choose the type of uh, feel as much as anything. I, I, I hate to call it feel because you've got that other one over there, but it will EQ uh, the amp. I could say that. It may do an awful lot more than just EQ. When you're on vintage, you get the old style of sort of saggy type of thing. Move on to modern. Think, uh, what would I think with that? I tend to think Mesa type of feel and sound for the cabinet resonance. And on deep, that is really uh, more metal than anything. I, I would say change, that does change quite dramatically. Uh, sort of scoops out the sound. Uh, irrespective of where the rest is down there, you still get this sort of scooped out sound. So I've tended to be here and here personally, but if you get into the really more metal -y stuff and detuned, you definitely move across to there. That's a very powerful control and it's very simple to use. You just move it to the sound that you like and you're running. It's none of this faffing around like you do with the likes of the FX3. Uh, through 5,000 different IRs, which is absolute nonsense. Frankly, that's all you need, three. <laughs> you don't need anything else. Well, the power control's pretty much uh, self-explanatory, isn't it? Well, almost, but not quite, because when you're looking at these wattages, we've all been there with uh, equipment that is sort of transistor-based, and that power output is awful, awful, absolutely awful. I remember even back in the 80s with the Marshall transistor head, a flat thing. You'll remember it, you guys that have been around a while. And it's supposed to have been 100 watts, I think, and it was more like 10. <laughs> it sounded crap. Anyway, we're not on that, we're on this. It can actually output one watt of power. Believe it or not, it can or we can move to 50 watts and at 50 watts you can see it's set to 50 and this is some of the settings I've been using so I've hovered around 50 watts all the time almost I used it except when I went and tried the others out and they're too loud for what I need to be honest you can push it through 100 watts and you'll gain uh, more headroom and, and for that clean channel the headroom is incredibly high when you start moving up here and when you move to max at 150 watts that clean headroom is just i haven't seen any amp like it uh it's as clean as any amp i've ever played and uh that's uh, pretty awesome if you want uh to get that headroom you know needless to say it's a variable uh output and I like that. I think that's really, really useful, especially on an amplifier that is or could be as uh, loud as you want this one to be. I mean, it literally would play two 4B12s on 16 ohms at 150 watts in an arena. <laughs> or it could play one watt on a 1B12, 8 ohm, sitting in your bedroom. Well, that's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. Moving back down to the bottom here, you've got a power light and an on and off switch remember there's no uh, standby on this type of amp and you've got the master that I briefly talked about that can set the overall uh, volume of the amp which is very nice well so far so good I don't think there's anything I don't like about this amp so far but how bad's that sound could be terrible I've seen expensive products that are terrible before <laughs> Too complex, too this, too that. At least with this thing, it looks like an amp. Because <laughs> it is. And here's the pedal. This is the floor pedal that it comes with. See? Now across the front we've got here, we've got clean, crunch, lead one, lead two, effects loop A, B. And you can have A and B on at the same time, or one on and one off. Or you take your pick. You've also got around the back here, interestingly, I'm not going to zoom this in too much. Uh, expression pedal for volume and for the master. So you can turn the master down or you can turn the volume down of the specific channel, which is quite nice. And this is the foot control that goes off to the back of the amp. 
Interestingly, you've got on the back of here, and I'll harp on about it over and over forever, you've got all the CE approvals, you've got where it's made, made in China, and you've also got the full address of the product uh, of the maker, uh, as is a requirement for CE approvals that does not exist or did not exist on the Fractal Audio uh, Axe FX3 when I reviewed it. Absolutely did not exist. So you can see that a maker that is serious about manufacturing products isn't frightened to state where it's made, isn't frightened to put on the back of the product everything they should do. Uh, what can I say? It's either that simple. You either do everything as it should be or you don't. And if you don't, well, <laughs> it's not certified properly. <laughs> yeah, This is a classic example of exactly what I have always said. I'll give it that. Well, now we're going to move on to the, uh, the tone capsules uh, and this amp and what's available and what isn't. I know that at launch time in 2016, uh, I mean, you can see Roland Corporation themselves and Boss telling you that there'll be a number of modules. Well, it came with one module as standard, did this 150 watt one. Not sure about the 75. Maybe the only difference is the 75 or 150 can't be sure because they ain't got a 75 but it came with one and there was another one going to be made which was made because there it is legacy tone capsule for what's around Steve Vai there's his little logo and all the rest of it but they, they sort of harped on that there'd be more of them and I've never seen any more uh, for the was craft or was craft amplifier so my guess is they didn't make any more yeah and that probably tells you something. But we'll come back to that in the summing up as well. Let's move on to this capsule though. For now, I've got a few little pictures. You'll see one of them up there right now, somewhere up there. And where it's showing you inside of the Steve Vai Legacy Tone capsule. And uh, you can see very clearly that it is actually an electronic device. Now, whether that electronic device has got uh, software inside it or something like that, who knows? They're never going to tell you. They're definitely never going to tell me. But I can see electronic components inside there. It's not just a, uh, you know, a, a software thing. Far from it, in my opinion. So, so this does separate this product out uh, really a lot from most of the others. But... Now we could cite the Hughes and Kettner Black, whatever it was, I mean, forget the name these days, uh, which had some sort of module that glowed at the front and that had some uh, things in it that you couldn't get to find out about. But that sounded very different than this does. I can tell you that straight off because I reviewed that one as well. Black Shadow, that was it. Black Shadow 200. Claimed to be, I think it claimed to be 200 watts or something ridiculous. It's a good example of an amplifier that isn't, or doesn't sound the output that the manufacturer bits floating around here the manufacturer claimed it would be in the case of this one I can assure you when these say 150 watts really is yeah but back to these I really would have liked to have seen more modules at least another one or two you know you might have a metal you know real metal module not that these aren't but they are they're sort of not quite what I'd mean by metal. Yeah, you too. So I'd like to see another couple of them. Uh, I'm probably never going to see them, which is a bit of a shortcoming, really, uh, because this amp, believe it or not, is a really good amp. You can hear it anyway. Uh, some of the reviews I've seen, uh, they seem to push it across as being very tinny. Clearly their reviews, it doesn't sound tinny on, on the stuff that I've already done out there. Uh, it, it, it just sounds great. So, but the module, I think, is well overpriced. It feels overpriced. If you know what I mean, it just feels wrong. I don't mean the, the sound, I mean 
the fact that you're paying that much money. Check out how much they are in the States, guys, and just prick down there on how much they are and where you saw them at the price. And you can do the same with the amp as well if you want. Go and take a look around for new amps or nearly new amps and see what they're going at and just post it down there. It should all be very interesting for anybody that's looking at something like this. Now then, well, what's my findings? What's the, what, what do you think about it, Tony? Is it really any use? Is it, is it another one of them amps that I'm going to sell tomorrow? <laughs> I do that sometimes. Yeah. Actually, my experience with this product was very, very good. And firstly, I'll explain why. And I, I, I'm harping back to simulators because there are no tubes in this amp. There aren't any. No matter what it looks like, it's an electronic device. There are no tubes. There is no real, uh, also, there's no real software for you to sit there piddling around on your PC or your Mac. There's none of that. It's, it's just, it's WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Remember that old phrase? Yeah. Well, that's what it is. That's scratching. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it is. And, and that's a good thing. And I'll explain to you why it's a good thing. I did a review on uh, Fractal Audio Axe FX3 that I keep referring to because that was the last one I looked at. And it was similar money to this. And you know what? I had three other guys uh, use that equipment in the studio and they were faffing around and I, you don't want to know. This amp, we put it on top of the cab, we turned it on and within 30 seconds, I mean 30 seconds, just like a real tube amp, we had really good tube sounds and they were near enough. They felt right and they sounded right uh, as a tube amp or nearly very very nearly I think Rowan were onto something with this technology and you know I'm not sure if you know how they developed it well, let's talk a few seconds about that so when Rowan Boss invented this technology no not the amp the rest of it that I'll call it a simulator because that's as near as you're going to be able to describe it it's not a software simulator it's a hardware simulator and it's, it's very different than that other stuff out there most of them in fact I could almost say all of them are based on software this thing isn't or they said at the time isn't so what did they do well what they did is they took the tube amp and they analyzed the tube amp and its different little sections internally and what that section did and how it affected the tone so at the start of it you have a, a guitar input and at the end of it you have this tube tone which is different than all the other tones you know a tube tone it's not like a transistor tone and these have got transistors so they analyzed this circuit from front to back on different amplifiers different this different that and they decided to simulate in hardware, not in software, actual hardware, how that affected the tone at the other end of the chain, the, the output coming out from the tube amp. I don't know how many times that's actually been done, but I don't think many, probably, maybe never. But that's what they did so what you end up with is all this hardware inside actually affecting the uh, why does that come off <laughs> actually affecting the final tone just in the same way that a, a tube amp circuit would now that's a master stroke really because it allows you to turn this thing on and within 30 seconds you are playing a great tone that feels right and sounds right and that for me is one of the key differences between a product like this a 2000 I think the 2300 pounds or 2400 pounds retail 
and an Axe FX3, which is also in the same ballpark, but it doesn't actually have a power amp. It has millions of effects. It has millions of cabs. It has millions of this, millions of that. And you know what? It doesn't sound as good as this. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. This sounds better. And you turn it on and it's there. How good's that? That's just very much like a real tube amp. And that's what you want. If you're buying one of these, that's what you want. Strangely, uh, with all the simulators, you ask those guys, you can ask them, you can say, well, what do you want? And they'll say, well, I want it to sound like a tube amp. Ask them. Now, anybody who comes on here and says different, don't lie. <laughs> You'll go that way when you die. It's not a good idea. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> so let's sum up. It's a good time to do that. You've seen the inside. You've seen everything that nobody's ever showed you. And you're going to hear it also. So let's sum up. The price. Hey, Tony, what did you pay? Well, did I pay the £2,300? No. Did I buy it second hand? No. I bought it. X demo. And I bought it from... Uh, Sound effects in the UK. It's down there now. There it is. And I paid, uh, what you can see, it's condition. <laughs> it's brand new. I paid £900 for it. And that was it. Now, a 900 quid, or quids, as the Americans like to say, well, it's about $1,200. You might get them cheaper. For an X demo one, uh, or maybe even a refurb one from Rowan. They actually come out to you, well, as good as new. I would say this is almost as good as new. It's got one tiny little mark over there that you never noticed, or maybe you did. Uh, so for that sort of money and for what it does, you won't find a tube amp handling 150 watts in two 4B12 caps. Make no mistake of that. And, and Rowan say that this thing will work all day and all night, flat out. It will control itself, manage itself, do everything. It's all there in the technology. That, to me, makes this a very powerful thing. But at eight or nine hundred pounds, itchy nose, eight or nine hundred pounds, what's not to like? Oh, the sound. Well, we'll get to that. Well, what else? What else, Tony? I love the way that it's put together the quality of the product very very high quality and it reflects honestly it reflects a 2000 pound amplifier the quality second to nobody and second to nothing out of all the stuff that i've looked at over the years this is good inside as anything you know i've seen tube amps that are absolutely brilliant and as a tube amp handmade they really are brilliant but bearing in mind what this is, in its way, it's brilliant. It's just the same, even though a lot of it's been done on a machine and it's eventually been put together as it has. I, that's one of the great things about it, the quality. I know that the service from this company, Roland Boss, and the dealer is very good. That's another reason I bought it. But most importantly, because I bought it as an X demonstration product, it's got a full warranty. Now look, 900 pounds as opposed to 2,300 pounds with a full warranty, <laughs> says it all. <laughs> it says it all, doesn't it? I love the dual loops as well, where you can have modulated in one side and you can have uh, other effects that don't get on well with modulation in the other one. And they're switchable right there. I like this, although, I don't like it enough to pay 270 something pounds every time I want another one. I'd have liked to have seen four of them. I haven't got four of them. There aren't four of them. What else? I love the air feel thing. It really does make the amp feel, very, very important to me, feel like a tube amp. If he didn't, I would be the first to say so. Make no mistake. What else do I like? I like the fact you can shut it down to one watt. Oh my God, how good's that? And I also like the deep, although I don't really play metal. Some I've got some songs that are 
bordery. So I like that as well. I like, uh, honestly, everything about this thing. And I also like the fact that it's a, a three unit rack size, 19 inch rack, so I can take it out of this plastic covered box and put it in a rack if I want to. I can even have it stand alone because it's got little feet underneath it when you pull it out of this rack. It's all good. Yeah. Well, hey, Tony, what don't you like? Well, actually, there's a few things. There are a few things. I'd like to have seen complete MIDI control. I'd also like to have seen uh, a little bit of software to control the odd thing internally. And I won't bore you with why or what, but I'd like to have seen a tiny little bit of that. Nothing like any of the simulators, but uh, just a little bit of control. That would have been nice. It's not there. The amp isn't really geared towards that. It's geared towards 24b7, turned on, rock and roll, I guess. I didn't like the retail price. No, I think it's too high. But I think they're all too high when you get above £2,000 or approaching $3,000. Price of this too high. Like that. That's the sort of stuff that the ordinary guitarist wouldn't spend two and a half thousand pounds or two thousand three hundred pounds give or take on one of these the ordinary guy and i am an ordinary guy believe it or not i am i'm just like you but at 900 pounds i bought it to review i'll probably be keeping this one because i like it it's good uh what else can i say not a lot i like the warranty uh, from a, an X demo, I like anything to do with warranty because they do fail, everything fails. Don't want anybody tell you I've got the brand that doesn't fail, they do. And in my opinion, uh, I think there's one word <laughs> why this may never catch on because I think the technology's carried on moving forward with Roland Boss and the one word's called Katana. Now, the Katana amp isn't one of these <laughs> but I can see where it's sort of moved forward cheaper uh, probably with slightly different technologies and things like that so other than for professional use uh, this might be an overkill yeah that's a good uh, assumption to make but for a studio guy like me I think this is pretty awesome. It's reasonably heavy as well, by the way. It's not light and flimsy like some other stuff. It's got a bit of weight behind it. And they rate this as their best amp from, you know, these artists, amplifier artists. Wazza. Yeah, or Wazza. Could be Wazak, <laughs> but I don't think it is. So, that's a summing up. Playing's coming up now. Uh, I hope you like this one because. I've never seen anybody demonstrate it in the way that I do and I have done in this video and, and to me this shows this product as being something really different, something different rather than the everyday crap that's out there from some of these people. No more names, so I've had enough of names. You know. So lastly, do, 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 do. don't forget to go to TonyMcKenzie.com. Will I update this on there with a written review? I might, you know. Got, I, you see, the, the trouble is, with my website, I only do one of two things, can't I? I can either do these videos or do the website. You don't have the time for everything. It is impossible. Then you've got to sit there and reply to guys, which I always do because you've taken the time to contact me and you've spent your time doing that. And I believe the only real proper way of treating people is to come back and answer. Yeah, reasonable people. And it's all great fun, isn't it, guys? So, I hope you like it. Put down there what you think about the product and, uh, you know, how it's built and the quality and how it sounds and all that sort of stuff. And let's get a really good overview going of what the Wazacraft amp, the 150 watter, is like. And if you've got a 75 watt one, put it down below whether it's about the same, it's different, or it's this or it's that. Everything to do with Wazacraft amps, and I don't mean the pedals, by the way. You know, let's have it down below and uh, that will help people that uh, are considering buying one of these. 
from a review that is a real review as opposed to all them guys that you've seen playing this amp and every one of them, well nearly every one of them, uh, is funded by someone else, yeah. Now get out of here. <laughs>
Well, there you have it, the boss Wazacraft. <laughs> Wazacraft amplifier, not a tube in sight, there's a couple of simulations. But uh, I just used a few guitars, plugged it in, I had an RC500 in uh, loop B, and I had a Fender chorus in loop A, which I switched on and off. I generally used, uh, yeah, lead one and lead two. <laughs> Because I'm like that. Uh, yeah, there might be a couple of clean sounds, but it's unlikely on this one. <laughs> if I could have been bothered, I just forget now, even. It's all like a whirl. But there it is, and uh, it's 9 out of 10 is very well deserved, I might add. Bearing in mind it is not a tube amp. This place is riddled with tube amps, honestly. They're everywhere over there. And uh, I don't see... Uh, any reason not to keep that amp, especially like I said all the way through the video, when you can get one of them for eight or nine hundred pounds, honestly they're worth every penny. Two thousand three hundred and plus, well that's a joke, but eight or nine hundred pounds, uh, really really worth the money. So have a fish around like I did, and uh, by the way, uh, I've actually got a cab coming for that, a two B twelve cab, that I paid about four hundred and twenty pounds for or maybe less, <laughs> something like that. Again, it's from uh, soundeffects.com, affects, not effects, soundeffects.com, and they seem to have uh, some of it uh, that's X demo or X, uh, I don't know, returns or whatever. But in the case of this stuff, the amp here, it was perfect. And in the case of the cab, I expect it to be perfect as well. And it's got those custom made speakers in there that Wassercraft and Celestian made together. So it will sound different even than what I've been playing through, which was a 1960A uh, cab. It was mic'd up with an SM57. It went off to a little desk over there along with the backing, straight into the camera. So you were hearing exactly what came out. I had a set of cans on with the wall speakers turned off so I could hear what was going on. And uh, that was it. Yeah, what a great uh, a great amp for that sort of money. Now some of you will balk and say, well, there's no tubes in it. But I'll tell you this, <laughs> one thing I can tell you, is that thing there was better than the Fractal Audio Axe FX 3 and 2 all day. I could walk up to it, turn it on, and literally, no faffing around, no, you know the crap that goes with that. 
you could turn it on and it sounded really great and it actually sounded better than the Fractal Audio 3 that I reviewed. <laughs> what about that? Now you might say, well oh, Tony's got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. But unfortunately not. Remember I invested in the Fractal Audio in the same way I invested in the Boss Wazacraft. And that's just a thought. You know, think about what I said and why I said it. I didn't say it through some ridiculous chip on my shoulders. There's no chips there, one or two fish. But I've got a Kemper in there, I like the Kemper too. In fact the Kemper's getting you know, in the old rack that the Fractal Audio came out of and I sold. Oh, I sold it. Yeah, well, that's how life goes. If I'm not going to use it, it might as well go. Anyway, that's the boss, Wazacraft. And, uh, you know, I tried some Wazacraft pedals, by the way. Or at least one. I couldn't tell any difference. <laughs> but until next time, from TonyMcKenzie.com, get out of here. Oh, one last thing. One last thing. I sold an amp just the other day to a, a chap and he came over here and I was telling him you know I'd had all this health trouble which I still got going on with different things and I said oh, I've had prostate cancer and he said wow he says I've I've got got prostate cancer I said oh they're doing it then aren't they no they're not they're not doing it they can't fix it and basically he's had everything thrown at him that he can have thrown at him and I don't think he's gonna it's going to last long. Well, it'll last a while, I'm sure. Until you can't last any longer, I guess, if you know what I mean. But if you can catch prostate cancer early, just trust me, you'll still be around. It's been six years since, uh, over six years since they picked up, well, I picked up the prostate cancer and said to them, check this. And I'm still around and alive. And uh, it hasn't gone dark. And I think if you're over 39, Trust me, you need to be checked. Don't believe what people tell you. Oh, it's an old man's thing. Well, I'm old now, but listen, I've seen people that were 39 and 40 years old with prostate cancer. Always get checked, dudes. Until next time, get out of here.